graphics and I do campaign management for crowdfunding people, like video scripting and all that. If pretty much if it's creative and you need somebody to want you, know, I can help you. Nice. Stage. I use this because most home pages are a lot like this. 
most Twitter accounts are a lot like this. You can't really tell what's going on. You know, there's no real point to it. Everybody tries to jam everything in there because they're trying to get every, squeeze everything out of one thing. You're trying to squeeze blood out of a term, essentially. And you can't do that. You need to have a purpose for everything you're doing. And that purpose needs to ring out when I'm looking at whatever your outlet is, whether it's Twitter, homepage, whatever. Okay? So simplify. Clarity. That's what you want to think about. Low pressure at this point. You don't want to be selling right out of the, the gate. Generally speaking, there are some exceptions to that. If, if you're what's called highly transactional, so if you're selling beer and you are uh, competing, you're kind of shouting to the hurricane of all the other beer sellers out there, you want to take a purchase pretty fast. But if I'm selling you high ticket coaching and my ticket is $30,000 a year, I'm not going to, hey, give me a check for $30,000 right when you need me, right? That feels too fast, it feels pushy, right? So, greeting, relax. You're chilling back on a nice, big, comfy leather couch. Unless you don't like leather, then it's pleather. And you're just chilling out, right? There's a nice warm fire, unless it's warm out today, and there's a nice cool air conditioning. You're just chilling out. You're learning, right? You're chilling out, you're having a glass of wine. You're learning. That's what, how you want to think about it. If it doesn't feel that way, you need to think about restructuring your content. The second step is report building and investigation. A lot of sales processes and trainings will separate these into two steps. I combine them because I don't believe you can do them separate from each other and it be effective. Okay? So I'm going to build rapport. I'm going to understand who you are. I'm going to kind of let you know where I am, who my ideal clients are in this process. Then I'm going to essentially ask you to identify that, yes, I am interested in your product or service and I have this need. I want the solution. Okay? I use this and the FBI because um, the FBI has hundreds of thousands of people solely dedicated to one thing, and that's learning about people. Every piece of paper, in every folder, in every box, on every shelf in this room contains the output of hours and hours of human endeavor to learn about somebody else. Are you going to do a lunch on that? Yeah, I usually do like two or three a year uh, that do something like this. Uh, so if they're that dedicated, we should be that dedicated. You never stop learning about your clients, about your ideal customers. And here's, you may feel like you know them really well, wait 10 years, everything changes, because why? You have the online generation that were born in like 1985. They don't really have a clear understanding of life about computers. Then you have the folks that are born in 1995 who don't really have an understanding of life without the internet. Then you have the folks that are going to be coming online in the next five to 10 years. They were born in like 1997 to 2004. And these are tablet kids. Fablet, sometimes they call them now. Phone tablets. They do not know life without smartphones. They don't know life without social media. The buying process, the learning process, the sales process, is much different, although in reality it always stays the same. So, always learn about your clients. How do they buy? What do they think? What do they fear? What do they love? These are things that you should know about them uh, because it will affect their purchase process. Presentation. So we've gone through greeting, rapport building, and investigation. Now we're at presentation. After I greet you, we shake hands. Then I get you through the process of self-identification. You raise your hand and say, I'm interested. I have a pain that needs to be solved. I say, great. Now that I've understood a little bit more about you, this shiny object could be the solution to your problem. It's the first time you try to present a solution, okay? That I apply a possible solution. And notice I'm saying possible. I may be very convinced that this is the solution, but I'm not going to tell you this is the solution to your problem. I'm going to present it as a possibility. This is, tell me your name. Don. Don. Don, I've heard what you said. I think this might be a solution to your problem. Let's talk about this. So I'm presenting it, right? Presentation, uh, you should not be selling before this. If you are, you're doing it wrong, okay? Even if, like we talked about highly transactional, you still are going through uh, greeting and report building investigation. It just happens really fast, okay? Greeting may happen on the SERP page, it may be on the method description, that may be the only greeting you get in, but it's still there, okay? So, a clear path is what you have to have for presentation. If you don't have a clear path to a solution in your sales process, presentation is not going to be effective, okay? 
Imagine this very same scenario without that path there. All you've got is a field. Where am I supposed to go? Think about that. That, that really is, I, I love human behavior. I really love it because it really, it, it's very revealing. Everything in the sales process is so revealing about human behavior because it's all about me pulling money out of my pocket. I like my money in my pocket. It feels very warm and secure there. I have worked really hard to get it there and it's painful for me to take it out and give it to anybody else. So there has to be a bigger pain for me to do that, right? But there needs to be a clear path to why. There's 30 more people on the Google search return page to where somebody else is going to do it right. So they can just bounce right out there and go find it. If you don't get if you're not going to give it to them, right? So a clear path. Make it easy. I can look way down the road and see where that path is going. Whereas if I'm, not, if I'm in a field with no path, I'm looking all over the place. That's the way a lot of websites are. I get to the website, it's just one big open field. Hope you find what you like. You know, we put some words here. We put some navigation bars. You do the rest of the work. I'm leaving. I'm out. Okay. Clear path. Presentation. You're presenting a solution to my problem. Demonstration is the fourth step. So we've gone through greeting, rapport building, investigation, presentation. Now demonstration. Now I've showed you the shiny object. Here's your shiny object. Demonstration says this is exactly how it's going to solve your problem. These are the five ways it addresses this pain you've told me about, Don. You told me you have these problems. You told me you know how you've tried to solve this before. Now, this is how the shiny object is going to solve it. If we were talking about blogging, I was telling you blogging services. Blogging is going to do these seven things for you. It's going to make your life easier this way, right? So demonstration is going to tell it exactly how. <clears throat> That is an unclear demonstration. What? Very quickly. Are these all separate pages? These are all separate pages. Most likely, yes. Most likely. Okay, we're just going to go to this slide. If you have to explain it one once, I'll put this up there because this is what a lot of web pages feel like. A lot of Twitter feeds, too. You go on Twitter feed, you've got stuff about donuts, you've got stuff about kittens, you've got stuff about my sales stuff, I've got stuff. It's all over the place. There's no core idea. And that doesn't mean you talk only about what you talk about, but what it means is if there's a cohesion there. If you should be able to go to my Twitter feed and find out stuff about Austin, stuff about if it's my personal feed, it's whatever I want. But if it's my business feed, it needs to be about whatever that business is about. What kind of solutions do I provide? Who do my clients look like, right? What kind of community do I have? So if you have to explain it more than once, you're doing it wrong. I like, I've always loved this guy. Um, he's very enthusiastic, but he's wrong, right? One of them's doing it wrong. I've, I've always presented this as if it's him doing it wrong, but he could be right, who knows, it could be her that's doing it wrong. One of them's wrong, though. The close, we're all afraid of the close. Uh, the customer's afraid of being closed and sold the wrong thing. Salespeople are afraid of the close because they're afraid of rejection. So we fear the close, but the reality is if you do these other four steps correctly and you really robustly invest in them, believing that you only do business with people who are the right fit for you, closing's easy. I almost never uh, have to close, almost never. Uh, when uh, really at the end of the deal, all we're talking about is when we engage, for how much, for how long. It's never, I don't know if this is right for me. Why? I did my job. I investigate, I know what they are, I know what their pains are. So I talk about pains and solutions, right? Then when we get to the close, they just want to know how, how, how long is it going to take? How much is it going to hurt? You know, it's kind of like going to the dentist. You don't go to the dentist going, I don't know if I want to solve this toothache. You know, it's causing me raging pain and it makes me shake and hurt so bad, but I don't know, I don't know if I want to solve it or not, right? You're at the dentist for one reason, that's to get rid of your pain. That's the way your self process should be. So. This is my definition of sale. When the right solution meets the right person for the right need at the right time. Any one of those three elements are not present, that means it's inorganic, it's shoehorned, it's pushed, it's false, it's artificial, it's possibly fraudulent. Something's not right, okay? That's my opinion. Okay, now, let's jump into Anybody have any questions or thoughts at this point? No. Okay.
Okay. So with everything that I've said, what do you think could be some of the high points of where do you think blogging, how, how would blogging work in the sales process? Maybe. Maybe. How we just have blogging or right now? Blogging. <clears throat> well, I was talking to you uh, real earlier and I I used to do the old SEO for my own websites. Uh, and so I would use blogs and I would write articles to get their I get them to think about, you know, things that are problems. Right. But then I would use that blog to use links back to my website. Yeah. Yeah. So you're gonna go share it somewhere. Right. So maybe post those blog wherever you post them on your own blog if there's another place where you can post that. And then basically with all the search engines that but those uh, articles and those links point back to you. So I would use it for that. What when you say you used to what what year well, we were talking two thousand seven to about two thousand nine. Okay. I had a really like a like on every search engine, I was like number one and number two. That's great, that's great. So it's not a really important element uh, thing to remember and kind of historically is Twitter started in 2007, yeah. okay? So blogging itself was a new medium at that point. Yeah. There were, the blogging comes from the term web blog, okay, that's what blog comes from. Web blogs started, it's essentially the first phase of what we now know it's essentially the modern iteration of Ed TV. I don't know if you've looked on YouTube. You know what YouTubers are? Mm -hmm. yeah. There's this whole soul club culture, man. It, my, my nieces and nephews told me about it. I'm like, oh yeah, I watch YouTubers. You watch YouTube? I mean, I watch YouTube. Like they have their own channel and everything like that. It's not just that. They've got this whole audience. Yeah. You've got this whole, it's, it's fascinating. There's a great uh, documentary on Netflix about it okay. that covers like eight of them. Eight of the most popular, at that time, most popular in the world. And some of these people are making multiple six figures just talking about their lives and stuff. So my point is, that's what blogs started as. Right. I bake cupcakes, this is why I bake cupcakes, this is what I love about cupcakes, I'm gonna go read about her cupcakes, right? Yeah. So now, it, it's, it, it's like everything else, it evolves through multiple phases and it's reached a very highly evolved or highly devolved phase, it really depends on how you wanna look at it. Because you have a lot of people, not saying that you were doing this, but a lot of people are out there trying to game the system, they're trying to get an edge through blogging. Mm -hmm. So the biggest change that has happened since the 07 to 09 era is that Google has vastly and dramatically changed the way they rank. Now, we're able to rank pages now without any links at all. No links. You don't have to shoot links anymore. That's generally true and there are exceptions. Links don't always hurt, you just have to be careful with them. But just by creating your content in a certain way, you can get pages to rank. I've got a page uh, for a Dallas uh, website that ranks in real estate sales with zero links. I have not shot any links to it. They said, Google said they wanted to go this way, so I went tested it and it worked. So it's a different world than it used to be. It's all about content and how useful it is to the reader, okay? So that's a very, very, very important, indispensable principle, really, okay? So blogging can really work in any phase of the sales process down to the point of closing. I can tell you, um, let's talk about sales consulting. Be a little self-serving for a moment. So let's say I'm gonna do a blog on sales consulting and I'm gonna tell you a case study, uh, the five ways this sales consulting project helped X client close more deals. And I'm gonna break that down into five pieces it's a blog post, but that at that point, if you're reading this and you're really interested in it, you're thinking about, you've already got self-identified as someone who, uh, who needs sales consulting. So you've already gone through home page uh, uh, greeting and uh, report building investigation. You've identified for the presentation of the shiny object, the shiny object is sales consulting, right? And you're going down with the demonstration and presentation. So you're already on step four, right? It can also be, what is sales consulting? Now that's kind of back at the top of the funnel. The creating the report building. You haven't identified because you you're reading it as like, hmm, I haven't thought about sales consulting before. What is this thing and how does it work? And so then that, that is back at the top of the funnel. So it can really work in any phase. This is what's important. People try to use Twitter in place of a blog. So I'm going to try to convince you of an idea on Twitter. It doesn't really work that way. The problem is, 
you're shouting into a hurricane. Yeah, who's, yeah, who's bombing? It's not even that, because, you know, I see stuff from other people, and they're following. Who follow, I mean, not, not, in other words, I, it's not only who, who I follow that I see on my feed right, all the time. But the point is that in, I mean, you just go to any Twitter feed. I don't know if wi their Wi Fi is going to support it today, but we can try it in a second. But essentially, you look at it and you go away and have a cup of coffee, you come back 847 new tweets. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I mean. You have seconds to get your message in front of somebody. So there's a few techniques we can talk about here in a second uh, that will help that to be more effective. To be more effective. There we go. But first, I want to show you a blog page. Uh, we're going to be racing through this kind of quickly, so I highly recommend you take notes. I like some of you already know. So this is a buddy of mine. Uh, his, his business return on now. It's an inbound marketing business. His name's Tommy Landry. He's a really good guy. So the title of this blog, one thing that I would definitely change about this is that the title is not uh, readily relevant. When you're looking at a title, where's your eye looking at? Right. Where is the title? It's under the, the image, right? I want. I'm going to want to make sure. If you my client, I would say let's get that at the top of the image, right? But he has an image. We're going to get back to that in a second. Now let's get dig down into the actual uh, blog itself. So this is good. You can see some links on it. One of the things that I recommend is this, a lot of people kind of subscribe to this idea, which is a sentence or two, then you break it into a different paragraph. What I like to do is have a little bit longer, so you might combine this and this, then bold the top, the first sentence. That pulls your eye down into the content, okay? I'll show you one of mine here in a second. Uh, but as you go through, he's got nice, uh, nice use of links, down in here, these are called uh, H tags. Or anybody unfamiliar, do, do not know what H tags are? Mm, in a design sense, yes, but not in an SEO sense. It is a header tag, but in, it's in the little thing with H1, H2. Exactly. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. So that is the technical name for it. But what you're what you're doing is you're dividing up the content into subject sections, okay? And you're telling people, hey, what the, this kind of what this section is about. Or here's a core idea. Sometimes these are just core ideas and not necessarily what the section is about, right? But you can see um, how this one here is larger than these two. These two are relatively the same. This is probably H2. These are probably H3s, okay? So that's how you want to use it. You want one H1 tag per page. You want to be careful about how you set your uh, your, your website up because if you have a repeating H1 tag on every single page, that's a problem because now you can't have a blog page with an H1 tag. Does that make sense? So you only want one H1 tag because more than that makes Google feel like you're trying to gain it. So you want one H1, a few H2s, quite a few H3s, and then more H4s. And really below that, you shouldn't really be using five on a blog post unless you've got 2,000 word blog posts. Most people aren't going to read that. So let's get down through this. So you can see he's got his content divided up really well, really nice. This is a long blog post. So anybody have any comments just as I scroll through this? Thoughts? So this is somebody that you know? Yeah. Okay. But don't let that shame anything you're going to say. He's got thick skin. No, 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 no. Because you said you would tell me to adjust certain things, so this is not. Yeah, I would add more images, images first of all. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. would add multiple images. When you do add images, are they going to be like kind of small sidebars? You can size them. You can size them. Yeah. That's another thing about WordPress, all this is built into it. You add the image, it gives you three options for sizing, and then you can also custom size it. Well, because I'm looking at you know, that, that main image, and I can't see putting like five. That size right, you don't want to. You don't want to. It's too large. Yeah. But smaller is good because why? People are not gonna once they scroll down here and they get an entire page of content, their their hope that they can get through this drops in half. Yeah. Now they scroll again. Oh my gosh, I'm never gonna get through it. Now the H tags help with that. 
I always say, I, I firmly believe this, when someone looks at a block of text, they want one thing, hope. That's what they want. They want hope that they're going to get through it. Yeah. Because what happens when you see a big block of text, and the worst ones are the ones that are just all, like one paragraph, 2,000 word paragraph. You see it, and you're just life force drains, right? <laughs> Especially if you know you have to read it. For me, uh, that's a bookmark. I'll come back to it. And you never uh, do. <laughs> <laughs> we also think in images, so. Yeah, absolutely. That's absolutely true. But an image has kind of a twofold main purpose here. Other than SEO, this is just customer facing. That's all we're talking about right now. Right. Customer facing. It has, it serves the actual page. Now, to me, there's a little bit of a disconnect. You're rolling a snowball, mm, SEO, you know, make some connection there for me. You know, right. I would, I might, I might I've use that. something with that snowball. That's it. Is it headed toward a cliff? Are people racing toward a cliff? I can't tell what you're talking about. I think it's, it's the idea that you're rolling a snowball, you're not grabbing some snow, right? You're rolling a giant snowball, that's SEO. You can't just like throw some snow at a wall and you're done with SEO, right? I think that's what he's going with, but I, I would probably put that's that in the title. Right, you could define that. So sure. Know what they're at. sure, sure. So then I want to get down in here, and if I'm going to continue that metaphor, I'm going to throw some other things in here. You know, maybe a blizzard and how you know small snowflakes add up and all these blah blah blah, whatever. The point is, I have more images in here. Now let's jump to Twitter. Uh, anybody familiar with Hootsuite? Anybody unfamiliar with Hootsuite? I am unfamiliar with Okay, Hootsuite is a essentially a propagator, aggregator, uh, automatic posting thing. So I can go in there, I can literally, if I want to, schedule posts for every single day for the next however long, how many over years. Yeah. Um, but I can also, because Chrome is so awesome, I highly recommend using Chrome. Right up here in the top right, I don't know if you can see it, because this doesn't scale properly. You see over here? Everybody see this? Okay. This is, uh, this is their extension tray. Chrome has amazing extensions. Yeah. One of them is what's called the Hootlips. So I can go over here, tap this, tap this, tap this. Okay. And we wait on it to think. Now what's going to happen is it's going to come up and it's going to, uh, and this is a really critical part of this, okay? There's a couple of tips I'm going to give you right here that are really, really important in social media. The first is the Hootlet will tell you how social media is going to view this blog post. Okay? One of the big mistakes people make is they'll put a blog post out there and they don't realize what image is on it. I share blog posts on my uh, Facebook page and I'll go and I'll, I'm popping out with Hootlet, right? So that means I'm not going to Facebook and posting it. And then I'll go back to Facebook and it's a completely unrelated image. That's on it because they didn't designate the images properly on the page. Let's try this. Again. So that's you're talking about when you include URL on your Facebook posting, and Facebook goes and automatically grabs a random. No, image. no, I'm talking about the images. No, 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 no. But this has more than one image on this page. Okay, this page has more than one image on it. It's got the header image, the logo image. It probably has some icons at the bottom. Every one of those is an image. The, Twitter, the little Twitter clickable thing is an image. The Facebook is an image. Those are all individual images. Unless they're idiots and they set all of them up into an image bar where it's one single image, which is silly. Don't ever do that. Make every single one individually clickable, okay? So now you see what this happened. I've got one of five images available. But what is here? This image. So it's good. It's set up correctly. This is the featured image on the page, okay? In WordPress, you always have a featured image um, option. You only ever want to set that on blogs. Don't set it on your pages. It'll jack everything up. It, depending on the way your work was. Uh, everything is, has an exception, so I'm going to quit saying exceptions. Uh, there's exceptions to everything, okay? So you get a nice title. Now he's got a secondary thing that's, just, that's really smart. He has his Twitter handle in his posting kind of vernacular. His uh, protocol, his social media protocol, has his Twitter handle in it. So when it gets shared, it automatically tags the tags it with the uh, Twitter handle. Okay, really important, really important. So now let's let's cycle through some of these images and see what else is available, so I can further make my point. So 
So it's got two versions of the same thing, future contributor, best of search engine journal, and then blank. Okay? So what you need to do when you create your content, in WordPress you'll have a view page option. You also have a preview option. You can't do this with preview. You have to view the live page. Okay? Get the page live and then go, this is one thing that's really uh, great on uh, the Google list, is I get to, once I, if I was building this page, I would have built it, made it live, and then and immediately check it with Google to see how it's going to display. Okay, so once that's done, we're going to take a second step. The more kind of steps you take like this, the better it's going to do for you. Let's see, I'll go ahead and get cute with this. Anybody have a Twitter handle? Yeah, at Dawn, J-W-N, Dawn, another N, W-B. W-B is a boy? Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? I actually only put two pens in my name. Anybody else? Anybody <laughs> else? <laughs> I don't remember mine. Um, at Garden Fresh Essentials. Garden Fresh Essentials. I feel like I should be eating a salad. I never was either. I never was either. But it's you gotta have it. They're moving. They're moving. It's like kind of like the Death Star in a quasi-positive way. However you look at it, it's just moving in positions. Right. That's it. That's it. But just like the Death Star, like slowly moving into position. You know, that's exactly what's happening with Twitter. Twitter is becoming one of the core foundational marketing online platforms. You have to use it. Okay. Yeah. So I also feel like if somebody doesn't have a Twitter and they're trying to sell me marketing, like what the hell? Yeah, I'm like, you have. I've got, I've got a buddy of mine who sells marketing services to people. He does nothing online. I don't know how he does it. Well, just good for him. All right, so <laughs> let's take a quick look at this. Can anybody, can everybody see this? All, every, can you read everything I put in there? Yes. Okay, so you see, we're talking about this blog post I'm meeting today. I tagged on at means that she's going to see that in her feed. All of her friends are going to see that in her feed as well. You've got to be careful with this, okay? Be very giving, give way more than you take. One of the things that really sucks is people out there over tagging. I've got people right now, because I have a few followers and I do a lot of marketing work, I have people all the time that are, that are, that are tag bombing me. Hey, use this new marketing tool, it's great. And I'll tag them right back, except you stink your job, and then I untag it. Um, <laughs> because they don't know me, they haven't said anything to me, they want something out of this, yeah, right? You have to be very careful about this, okay? So, and here's the thing. You're using the, the uh, plugin or whatever from Chrome. Oh, this, is Ho this is Hootlet's extension, yes. Okay. Hootsuite's extension. But we'll go to Twitter in a 